is going on, football fans? Back at it with another New York Giants video. And in this video, I'm going to jump into the New York Giants offensive line, which left a lot to be desired after week one. I'll jump into some of the metrics, being that it's very hard to grade an offensive line. Obviously, I'll talk about their performance on Monday Night Football and what I think they may or may not be able to do to improve that offensive line going forward, being that it is a huge focal point for this New York Giants football team. I also wanted to jump into some of the rumors regarding both Allen Robinson and Odell Beckham. Odell Beckham, of course, a former New York Giant. Mike Francesa came out with a tweet today, about four hours ago, saying that he's hearing rumblings that Odell Beckham and the Cleveland Browns are looking to get him out of town. And Odell Beckham, of course, is not happy there. I mean, can you blame him? Baker Mayfield has not been a good quarterback since he's been there. He had three catches for 22 yards. He thought he was going to leave the New York Giants, put up a ton of stats, and it hasn't worked out for him since he's left so far. You know, in 17 games, unless he missed a game last year, whatever it may have been, I think he's got three or four touchdowns. I think he had one or two in the last game last year. Has not been a good wide receiver since leaving the New York Giants, at least by Odell Beckham standards, and that would make sense as to why he wants out. Of course, I'm going to talk about some of the possible landing spots for Beckham along with Allen Robinson. The reason that Allen Robinson makes a ton of sense for the New York Giants, well, uh, to talk about rather, is because the New York Giants are playing the Chicago Bears this week, and Allen Robinson is their best weapon. Well, Allen Robinson came out today. He's looking for an extension. He's on the last year of a three-year deal, in which I think he made about $15 million per year, um, and he said he's not happy. He wants a contract extension, and he's demanding a trade to leave the Chicago Bears, and we'll see if it actually happens. If you remember last year, when the New York uh, Giants played the Minnesota Vikings, I think it was around week four. Uh, no, because they won week four. Week five, maybe, after we had won two in a row. Uh, Stephon Diggs came out and said he was not happy with the Minnesota Vikings, that he wanted out, didn't like playing with Kirk Cousins, and a lot of people were speculating whether or not Stephon Diggs may be traded within season. Didn't happen. They waited until the offseason, then they traded him to the Buffalo Bills, but Allen Robinson is not happy in Chicago. Chicago, of course, coming off a huge victory against the Detroit Lions in what a lot of people feel is a wide-open NFC North, even though the Packers did look very impressive. Uh, week one. But the Bears do have a strong defense, and if Trubisky could play the way he did in the second half in that football game, they may very well be a contender uh, to, to win the North this year. So I don't see them looking to trade Robinson right now, but knowing that if they got the right package, they'd probably look be looking to deal him. But coming off a week one victory, I don't see them in any rush to trade Allen Robinson. I think Allen Robinson is trying to use some leverage, being that they won a game week one, he had 75 yards receiving, and he's trying to get paid. He's not happy that he doesn't have an extension playing in the circumstances that he does. I don't blame players for trying to get that. We'll see if the Bears do, in fact, trade him. I'll talk about some of the possible destinations and whether or not the New York Giants would be a good fit. Um, but before I continue on the wide receivers, I kind of wanted to talk about what Joe Judge had to say about the New York Giants offensive line. And here, I think he's just trying to build them up. The New York Giants, yesterday, they, I mean, the offensive line was as bad as it gets. We couldn't run. Uh, the pass protection was decent. I'll get into some of the metrics, being that it's hard to, there's really no statistics for an offensive line outside of uh, sacks given up. As a team, they gave up three sacks, which actually wasn't that bad against the Pittsburgh Steelers, being that they had 54 sacks last year, led the league. The Giants had a 7.2% sack rate in terms of, you know, every time they drop back to pass, according to Football Database, which was the 19th uh, best number in the league, which is near middle of the pack, which is actually pretty good, considering the fact that Jones had, had 41 passing attempts, they couldn't run the ball, and they were going up against a ferocious pass rush. So in the pass blocking department, I thought that they were at least adequate. I'm not going to say they were great, but they were pretty good. You know, they gave Jones a pretty clean pocket throughout the game to operate when he was throwing the football. And knowing that they had to throw because they couldn't run, you knew that they were pinning their ears back. So I thought the Giants in that aspect were decent. Where they were horrible was in the run blocking department. But we'll get into what exactly Joe Judge had to say. Here's the quote here from Joe Judge uh, during the press conference today when talking about the offensive line. I think Nick Gates overall handled himself pretty well. It doesn't matter how one guy plays. All five guys have to play in sync all the time. So to me, this is Joe Judge, because we don't know. If you watch that game, Nick Gates did not play well. Cam Fleming did not play well. And the guards did not play well. And I'll get more into them in a second. But to me, this is kind of Joe Judge, much like he's done the whole season. You see how he's basically saying, I thought he did all right, but everybody's got to be in sync at the, at the same time. So the way I read that quote is, and he talked about how they put in good effort and everything else. 
He's not going to put the blame on one single guy. It's a team effort. He doesn't put anybody else above the team. And he's sticking up for Nick Gates, knowing that he was in his debut start at the center position. And he wants to give him time to develop. And I think that's the approach the New York Giants will take. Now, in terms of some of the options that the Giants have, if this does not sort itself out. Because if you look at the grading system, and again, it's only one week, guys. And you went up against a great defense and the Pittsburgh Steelers. We have to take all of that into consideration. It's only one week. But if this does not sort itself out over the, the next three, four weeks, the New York Giants are going to have to make some changes to that offensive line because you can't be getting your quarterback killed. And over the course of time, if you can't run the football, they had six yards. Saquon Barkley had six yards of 15 carries. You're talking about one of the most talented backs in the league. If you can't get the ground game established, you're going to get your quarterback killed. You're not going to be able to evaluate Daniel Jones for the future of this football team, and you're not going to see enough growth. So they need that offensive line to get a much better push up front. Whatever game plan they came out with this week, you got to scrap it up. You got to be able to block better. And it's not going to be much easier. You're going up against Khalil Mack this week with the Chicago Bears. And Cam Fleming didn't get it done. Cam Fleming surrendered a sack yesterday. The only offensive lineman that had a decent PFF grade was Andrew Thomas. Outside of him, everybody was a 50 or worse. That includes the guards. Kevin Zeitler was a 49 from what I saw on PFF. And uh, the same can be said for Hernandez. Now, you could probably say the fact that Nick Gates was in the middle, that might have hurt them as a unit. Because Zeitler was a pretty good offensive lineman for the Giants last year. And, of course, the opponent, the Steelers. But regardless, it was unacceptable. I mean, they were getting penetration. They were three, four yards in the backfield every time they tried to hand the ball off to Saquon Barkley. So, something we definitely need to work on. And if that does not improve, it will be a very long season for this New York Giants offense. And I completely get why people are pissed off after one week seeing the offensive line's performance. Because all you heard all offseason, for myself included, were how excited we were that the New York Giants were finally making it a point of emphasis to improve that offensive line. Now, one thing I'll say is they drafted three offensive linemen round one, three, and five. Two of them didn't even see the field yesterday, and the other one played pretty well. It's the guys that have been on the team, the Zeitlers and uh, Hernandez, who we hope gets better this year, not off to a great start, off a disappointing season last year. Did not uh, live up to it. Uh, the rookies did not play, though, outside of Andrew Thomas, who, like I said, didn't surrender a sack, had the highest PFF grade of anyone on the team. I think he was the highest, second-highest graded tackle in the NFL Week 1 behind Mekhi Becton, so, uh, against the Pittsburgh Steelers, which is pretty impressive. So I thought Thomas had a good game, but outside of that, the offensive line was abysmal. Uh, like I said, the PFF grades were horrible. You look on Football Outsiders, we ranked 19th against the pass, which is actually pretty good. Like I said, you know, when you factor in how many times Jones dropped back to pass, but the run blocking was dead last at number 32. Um, they have some kind of metric where it's some kind of, whatever it is, they were far and away the worst. The Bills were 31, the Giants were like negative and a half yards, and the Bills were like two and a half yards. And it, it wasn't even close. They were way below everybody else, which makes sense. The New York Giants couldn't get any push up front. Um, they couldn't move the football when they tried to, when they tried to run. Um, so that offensive line needs to get much better. Now, in terms of some of the things that the New York Giants could look to do, in my opinion, well, you've got a couple of options. I, I think they're going to go, especially when you listen to Joe Judge this week, I think they're going to go with the same offensive line they had week one. Don't expect to see any immediate changes. I think they're going to give Gates a fair opportunity at the center spot. Um, and I think they're going to let Cam Fleming continue to play at that right tackle until such time they feel like he needs to be replaced. But if he gets destroyed this week, expect to see some changes. And then your options become this. You could either, A, if Gates continues to struggle at the center spot and you feel like Parrott's not ready, you can move Gates over to the right tackle where he's probably more comfortable. He's played there before. He's played fairly effectively last year. He's also played the guard position. You could play him at the right tackle. You bring Pulley in at the center. Or you could bring, uh, you know, an experienced center off of waivers if you feel like he's not good enough. Um, but that's your option there. You can move Gates over to the right tackle. Or B, you put Parrott in at that right tackle spot and you leave Gates where he is. And if Gates continues to struggle, you just put Pulley in at the center spot if you don't want to put him over on the right side with Nick Gates. But I do think Gates could be an adequate right tackle if they feel like Parrott is not ready. Cam Fleming didn't get the job done week one. I mean, you saw Bud Dupree coming off free, freely, you know, free every time. Now, a lot of that had to do with the scheme. I actually watched Bobby Skinner's video. Did a great job there with the uh, with the film editing. Um, so, when you watch the film, it wasn't all on the offensive linemen individually. The blocking scheme just didn't work. But it's a major problem. And if it does not improve, like I said, the New York Giants are going to be in for a long, a long, long off season. And those are some of the options that I think we got going forward. And hopefully, we continue to see this offensive line grow. 
Like I said, I don't expect the finished product to start the year. You look at the edge rushers we're going up against. You're going up against some of the best edge rushers in the league. And, you know, it's only week one. We've still got the uh, the Skins week six. You saw what they did. You got the boy, the Cowboys who are decent. You've got the 49ers who have a great pass rush. You got the Rams. Obviously, Aaron Donald's going to be a force in the middle uh, for Nick Gates. So it's going to be really hard these first five, six weeks for the New York Giants to get a good push up front. And it's going to be important if you want to see Daniel Jones Throw the ball effectively and Saquon Barkley run the ball effectively. So it all starts up at the line of scrimmage. In terms of the rumors, I want to get back to that, talking about Odell Beckham and talking about Allen Robinson. Well, I continue to uh, smile, knowing that the New York Giants traded Odell Beckham before it was tr uh, too late. And now you're hearing rumors come out from Mike Francesa that Odell Beckham now wants off his second team within two years. He wants out of uh, Cleveland because he doesn't like the quarterback situation there. Hasn't been putting up numbers. Odell Beckham, to me, is still a very good wide receiver. He's still probably top 10, but he's not the receiver he once was. He sustained two key injuries. It only makes sense. He's still a good weapon. And yeah, would he improve the New York Giants receiving core in terms of talent? Yes. Do I see any kind of reunion? No. Dave Gettem is the same guy that traded him. I don't expect them to bring him back here. I, even if a new, new GM was here, I don't expect them to be bringing those types of players in. Doesn't seem to be the type of player that Joe Judge would be looking to acquire. In terms of where Beckham could end up, if they do, in fact, trade him... I expect them to go to a winning franchise that feels like they're a receiver away from contending. Uh, possibly the Green Bay Packers. That's a team I've talked about. They've never had a supremely talented wide receiver with Aaron Rodgers. That could make sense. Possibly the New England Patriots. Those are the two teams that pop up off the top of my head. Of course, the Patriots have shown in the past that they're willing to take chances at the wide receiver position. You saw Antonio Brown. In terms of Allen Robinson, I would say the same two destinations, but the Packers um, are in the same division as the Bears, so don't expect that. Yeah, the Jets have been rumored, but to me, I think that'd be a stupid trade by the Jets, knowing that Allen Robinson's going to be a free agent next year anyway. You'd have to tie up cap space. You're not doing anything this year if you're the New York Jets. I suppose it helped Sam Darnold if you want to look at it that way, but to me, it makes a lot more sense a team like maybe the New England Patriots. I could see them being in the market for a wide receiver. They're clearly a team that could use a threat on the outside. Obviously, they have Edelman in the slot, but Harry's kind of their number one option on the outside. I could see them looking to bring somebody in if they're looking to compete this year. But as far as the Giants goes, I, I don't see it. I don't really view this as a team that's looking to compete this year. Beckham doesn't make sense due to the fact that we traded him, and I don't really think he fits the model of the types of players that they want in here at this point in time. The guy's now forcing his way up another team. Um, as far as Robinson goes, I've never heard anything with him in terms of off the field or anything like that. He just wants to get paid. But again, the Giants are not a win-now team. I don't want to give up draft assets for a one-year rental when the New York Giants, more than likely, if we're being honest with ourselves, have a not that good of a shot to make the playoffs. So I don't really want to make a move on anybody. I know people were talking about that on Twitter, asking me to make a video on it. I kind of want to stay away from both of these individuals um, and continue to let these young players develop and look for a wide receiver next year in the draft or possibly free agency. But I don't want to be making any trades for anybody right now. At the end of the day, right now, if you're a New York Giant fan, see where you're at by the trade deadline. And if we're 2-5 and five or so, you start to trade away pieces like Evan Ingram. If we're going to be buyers, maybe then you start to make a move. But right now, it doesn't look like we'll be in the market for either one of those players. But of course, as a New York Giant fan, you want to see Allen Robinson traded as quickly as possible. And that Odell Beckham trade is looking a lot better. As always, guys, if you like what you watch, please subscribe. Drop a comment. Maybe give me a little thumbs up. Cheers.